Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Design Develop Share. As always, I'm David Anderson and today's video this month is going to be a little bit about building blocks in WPF with the model view view model pattern. And so what we're going to accomplish today is we're going to build a asynchronous command. So a little bit of infrastructure. Stay tuned because this is going to be a little bit different than an async command you might find out there on Google and or a Bing search. So in front of me on the screen, what I have here is actually how I do software design. So this is how I design out classes and their properties and methods for a software team. This is what they would typically consume. And so here we've got the design for an async command. We've got the corresponding interface, so I async command. And what we're going to do that's different about this is we're going to actually keep track of the num. Basically, we're going to keep track of the running tasks that the async command creates and executes. And we're going to use that to allow the caller to have more control over whether the task can execute. Because the fundamental flaw that I think a lot of async command implementations have out there is they make a pretty big presumption that you only ever want exactly one and only one asynchronous task running through that command. When in fact, there might be situations where you also want multiple asynchronous tasks running at the same time, all executed from the same command on your view model. So we're still going to be able to accomplish running exactly one asynchronous task, but we're also going to be able to do the latter. So let's take a look at this. We're going to build iAsync command. We're going to add a running tasks read-only property that returns an i enumerable of task. We're going to remove the messy object parameter stuff that we don't need for now because we are going to mirror this design and also build a generic version of the async command and get rid of the object parameter that I command traditionally has in favor of a generically typed parameter. So for the first one, though, we're not going to have a parameter. We're just going to have can execute that returns bool, execute async that returns task. The implementation, just a few notes here, we're going to accomplish that by implementing I command execute and can execute explicitly. And we're going to hide those away. So essentially what will happen is when WPF invokes the command, it will pass a null value for the argument. And basically the parameter is essentially disregarded in our implementation. And then we are gonna hook into the command manager requery suggested. And I have some advice for you guys on whether you should do this or not and call command manager invalidate requery suggested, or if you should take an alternative approach to raising the can execute changed event handler manually from within the command. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. So let's go open Visual Studio and let's add our first class file. So this is actually going to be our interface and this is going to be I async command. We're going to add this to our Windows namespace of fault track shell. All of this source code will be available on the Azure DevOps project. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is inherit from I command, and we're going to add our members. So we're going to have, of course, bool can execute, and we're going to have task execute async. Neither one are going to take parameters. That's our interface. The only additional thing we're going to add is the I enumerable of task. We'll call that running tasks read only property. Now let's add our concrete class implementation, async command. Of course, we're going to implement the interface now. I'm going to use ReSharper for this just to get the boilerplate code there and out of the way. We're going to go ahead and remove a lot of the default regions that it adds. We'll clean this up a little bit. And the very first thing we're going to do is move the property running tasks and the event up at the top. Kind of separate this out a little bit. For the event handler, we're actually going to use the event body syntax. We're going to add a add method body. And this is going to basically, we're going to hook into the command manager requery suggested event. And then same thing for remove. Unsubscribe from the event. So we're basically just delegating the can execute changed event into requery suggested essentially. For running tasks, we're going to create a private observable collection. 
And we're going to need an observable collection for how we're going to implement keeping track of running tasks here in a moment. But this will be an observable collection of tasks. We'll call this running tasks, lowercase r. We're going to initialize that in the constructor. This will also be actually protected because we are going to actually make this abstract. And we'll simply initialize our observable collection. And then for our property, we'll go ahead and just return that backing field, like so. Now for the traditional I command implementation for can execute and execute, we're going to hide those away. So this public bool can execute is actually going to become bool I command can execute. We're simply going to return the value of can execute without the parameter. We're going to do the same thing with execute. This will be I command dot execute. And same thing here, we're simply going to execute async. Now what's different about this one is this is going to be an asynchronous task. So this is actually going to be async void. This is a fire and forget method. So when WPF, when you click on a button and you have a command binding and it executes this function, it's fire and forget. You can't wait on it. So we are going to do async void, fire and forget. We ch can't change the method signature, but that's okay. So we are going to await our execute async, however. And there's some additional work inside of here that we're going to do here in a moment. So the other methods basically become abstracts. We want to delegate these to a driver who's going to implement them themselves. So both of these will be abstract like so. So we have a basic boilerplate for an async command, but what we really want to do now is basically give the caller who's going to, or the driver, or the implementer if you want to call it, we're going to give that person the control to determine whether this can execute or not, whether they think it should execute if there's already a task running. Maybe in that case it can't execute, or maybe they want multiple tasks to be executed by this command. We're going to give them that control. So to do that, we're going to come back here to our execute method. We are going to actually, instead of awaiting execute async, we're going to go ahead and store that into a variable and call that running task, because as soon as this line of code hits, whatever is being awaited inside of here is already going to be running, but we're just going to capture that. And then we're going to add that task to our collection. Now what we're going to do is say try await running task. We're going to add a finally block. And we're basically going to then remove that same task from the collection. So when the task is complete, whether it's faulted or ran to completion, we're basically going to remove that at the end. So what this does is it allows the implementer then to check the number of running tasks, or they could even check the state of the tasks inside the can execute that they're going to override and implement, and they have that control now. That's kind of the key main difference between this implementation and many of them out there. The other thing we're going to do is because we are hooking into requery suggested, and because this is going to depend on the running task collection on whether this will be able to execute or not, we are also going to have to notify the command manager that we need to reevaluate can execute when we add or remove a task to that collection. So to do that, we're going to subscribe to the collection changed of our observable collection. Just create a method for that. We don't particularly care about the action in this case, although we could. But we're basically going to say command manager invalidate requery suggested. So that will notify the command manager that it needs to reevaluate can execute, and that will allow the UI to react to enabled and disabled control states based on that. Now, the alternative approach to this is this has been the source of some controversy in the past because it does have some performance considerations. So here's my thing and my advice and my recommendation to anyone doing WPF and NVIDIA. This is my recommended approach for commands. Hook into this because then you hook into the default behavior of the command system in WPF, which is anytime keyboard input or mouse input or control focus changes, it will automatically reevaluate the can execute 
changed of our commands, and we want that. Otherwise, you have to program calls to raise this event all over the place. Now, the fundamental rule that a lot of people violate when they implement commands is they write a lot of slow executing code inside can execute. That's where they make the big mistake. Don't do that. All code you write in can execute should re run and return literally in a millisecond, maybe two max. CPU ticks preferably, but that's the mistake people make and why they have performance issues taking this approach. As long as you abide by that fundamental philosophy of always only writing fast running code inside of here, you'll never really have any problems, even with a large number of controls. That means no database code, no async code, no networking, no long running CPU intensive tasks, no disk IO, keep it short and sweet. It can, however, as a piece of advice and a practice, it can utilize properties from a view model as long as those properties are computed and their events are raised to the property changed event, it's okay to reference those from here, but that's where people make the mistake. However, if you do have performance issues, you can take the alternative approach, which instead of subscribing and hooking into requery suggested, you could simply expose a raise can execute changed function from here that then you can call from your view model to manually do it when properties and state of your view model changes. But for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, I feel like this approach is perfectly fine and acceptable. I've written a number of applications that are out there today that have a large number of controls and different views and, and they're fine as long as you abide by that principle of only writing really fast executing code in here. Video for another day on how to handle slow code or networking or async or something like that with can execute video for another day. So moving on, we have our boilerplate async command. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this implementation. We're gonna go ahead and create our generic typed version here. So we're gonna take these two files and go ahead and copy those. I tend to follow some of the older Microsoft practices that are around in the .NET source code code base and add a little tick mark at the end to represent the generic version of the interface. We're gonna make this a, I believe it's a contravariant or a covariant, I wanna say covariant. So we're gonna say n of t. And we're simply now gonna say t parameter for both of our methods here. We're gonna do the same thing inside our async command, the actual implementation. Go ahead and add our generic type parameter. Now we simply are going to add our parameters to our abstract methods, so t parameter. Now we need to pass the parameter from the i command implementation, but we're going to cast it to type t. And both can execute and execute. So now we have a version of a, an I async command that can take a parameter and a version that doesn't. So that's just really nice because you don't always need parameters and it's just kind of an annoyance I found. What'll happen with the version that takes a parameter is if you don't need it, it'll pass null. Same thing in the non-generic version, it'll just pass null and we simply disregard it in the implementation of the code. So that's all we have to do here. We have our async command implementations now. So what we're gonna do is actually test this out and show you that it actually works. So to do that, I actually have a git stash just to expedite the process here. We're gonna go ahead and apply this stash. This is simply gonna give us a couple of changes to the project. I've implemented a status text property. We're gonna display some status in the lower left-hand right, uh, lower left-hand corner of the application. There's gonna be a open menu command. We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail here in a second. And then of course, we've just got the rest of the boilerplate stuff that kind of wires everything together. I'm not going to go through that. You can download the code link in the description below and go through that later. So let's go ahead and apply that stash. This also is the Git Kraken Git client from Axisoft. Highly recommend it. It is a phenomenal Git client. Okay, looks like I made a little typo. Oh, we need to uh, implement our type parameter for our interface there. Sorry about that. Okay, so our solution builds. 
So we're going to go ahead and just run this just so you can see. So we have a little menu item up here and note the left hand, lower left hand corner down here. I'm going to click the button. It became disabled. We've got some status text and you can see after a short delay, that status text actually changed. And all that happened with just by our implementation of our async command. And that is asynchronous code. So let's go look at the implementation of that command. I'll go up to the desktop app here. And if we go to the commands folder, this is also my practice that I do not like putting the implementation of a command. I tend to avoid using action commands or delegate commands nowadays. And I tend to prefer to put commands in dedicated classes because in a larger code base, view models get way too much code. They really should be lightweight. I do have other videos I wanna to do to talk about that. But we have an open menu command. This is instantiated from the view model that it belongs with basically. And in here, now you can see for can execute, we've overridden that and we're able to return whether or not running tasks, the count is equal to zero. So if there are no tasks currently running, then can execute will return true. Otherwise it returns false. And that's kind of the value of capturing each task object as it gets, uh, begins to execute through the command system. And then we have our implementation of the command itself, the execution, where we just simply change the shell status text. And then just to mimic the asynchrony, we await a 2000 millisecond delay. And we have that task there. So very straightforward. We could run this. And there's our default behavior. And we can go back and we can change this. So if we were simply to return true, we would then be able to run as many tasks as the user can click on the button as fast as they can click. So maybe you have a feature where you want a user to be able to queue up one to 10 different events or operations, just depending on your requirements. So now if I click on this a bunch, now you can see we've got running tasks and they just all go and do their thing and return back. And then eventually the UI updates all throughout the process. Now, obviously in that case, you'd have to handle your own synchronization and you basically might have multiple threads and multiple background tasks going on. So you'd have to kind of handle your UI synchronization or whatever you want to do. But I can imagine some scenarios where maybe like I want to save five files and maybe I queue off a task for each file save over the network or something like that. But anyway, guys, that is the objective that we wanted to set out to do for an asynchronous commands using Windows Presentation Foundation and the model view, view model pattern. I hope you found this helpful. Asynchronous code in MVVM can be very challenging, but they are just normal commands. So before we go, let's show you one last piece, which is actually the view model itself. So we've got the shell menu view model, and there you have it. There's a basic I async command. We instantiate that in the constructor. And because I async command is also I command, you can data bind to it in your button click event like you would anything else. So it's a very straightforward implementation, but remember that key characteristic difference between this implementation and what's out there is the fact that we are not making an assumption that the caller or implementer only wants exactly one asynchronous task running at any given time. So guys, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, remember to hit the like button below. If you love the content and you want to keep keep up to date for more down the road, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. And in the description below the video, there will be a link to this project on Azure DevOps where you can get, have access to the source code and run the project. You could download that and play around with that. And guys, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.